you're ready to make up the lab you missed. So for this lab, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be rolling this marble down this ramp, across the table, and onto the floor. And what we wanna do is we wanna calculate where is it gonna land and see if it lands at our calculated location. So in order to do this, we're gonna to need to take some measurements. So the first thing is we're gonna to need to know how fast is it moving on the tabletop. We're also gonna to need to know how high is this tabletop. And with that information of how fast it's horizontally leaving that tabletop and from what height it leaves that tabletop, I should be able to calculate where away from the edge of this table, it's going to land. So let's go to the first step, which is measuring that velocity up on the tabletop, which we'll have to do a little calculations to get. So let's go there. All right, so our goal is to figure out how fast that marble is going across this tabletop. So in order to do that, we're gonna make sure this tabletop is a little clean. So there's no eraser shavings or anything on that. So we'll just make sure that that's smooth and clean. The second thing is what we wanna do is we wanna be consistent about where we drop that marble from here. So when you drop that marble, push it all the way up to the edge of that ridge and just always drop it from that same spot each and every time for consistency purposes. So the other thing we have is we have these timing mechanisms. They're called photo gates. So how these work is the ball will roll through that photo gate um, and it'll trigger a little light. It'll block that light, which will say start the timer to the computer. And then when it tr goes through the second one, it will trigger to say stop the timer. And so that's how we're gonna figure out that time. Now, what are we gonna time? Well, we're gonna time how long it takes to go one meter, just like you did in the train lab. So in order to do that, we are gonna to need to have these two timers exactly one meter apart. So let's take a closer look at these timers to see how we're gonna figure out where should we measure one meter between them. All right, so our goal here is we wanna measure from these little openings here. From, there's a little hole with a little light bulb in it on this side, and on the other side, there'll be a little receiver. And so what you wanna do is you wanna measure from one of those little holes to the other hole. And so that's gotta be exactly a meter. So let's go ahead, line up our meter stick right on those points. Another way to think about it is those holes are right on these seams. So you could actually measure from the seam between the two plastic bits being sandwiched together there. So you can measure one meter between those two seams as well. So let's go ahead and let's get that set up. All right, so I've set up our meter. So I've measured from this seam on this one to this seam on this one. And so now we can actually start timing. So to make sure that everything's set up for timing, um, what you're going to want to do is make sure everything's plugged in. So the computer's plugged in, the USB is plugged into the computer. Um, also make sure that this is plugged in. Um, this goes to the Logger Pro, which kind of translates that signal from here to the computer. Uh, makes a cool beeping sound um, when you plug it in. So let's go ahead and plug it in here quick. It'll go beep, beep, boobity, beep. Perfect. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and set up our computer. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that setup. Okay, so here we are. Now yours is gonna look a little different on the PC than on the Mac. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and follow those instructions. So the first thing we wanna do is open up our program. So we wanna open this up. We wanna go down to probes and sensors. Once in probes and sensors, we're gonna go down to photo gates. Photo gates here. And I want the pulse timer and I want the two gate one. So I want, oops, not velocity, just two gates. Pulse timer, two gates, hit open. Uh, and it should open up. Now, the next thing you want to, a screen like this will pop up. Perfect, exactly. Yes, I want to connect both those photo gates. Sometimes it'll only tell you there's one. Sometimes it'll connect two. Sometimes it won't connect any. Um, a lot of this has to do with the newer versus the older ones. So here, I got to connect both those. Or they might already be connected for you. So the next thing we need to do is just test. And so I would go through one of my gates, make sure that it blocks. And so it says right here that gate two is blocked, gate one is unblocked, and then I can block gate one. Okay, and make sure that gate one is the first gate it's gonna go through and gate two is the second gate it's gonna go through. So then I just hit collect, 
And what I can do then is I can start collecting data. So the ball will roll through the first gate and then through that second gate and it will give me a time. And I can just keep doing that over and over again. And it will keep producing those times until I have my five trials. All right, now that you've followed those instructions for setting up the computer, it's time to kind of go through this. So you, you've made sure that when you hit these little spots, those little red light go on and it's timing properly. Great. So now it's time to roll. Now, what we're gonna do is when we roll it, we're also gonna be making our marks on the floor. So we're gonna be taking two bits of data for each roll. The first bit of data is the time, so that we can find the velocity, and the second bit of data is how far it lands from the floor. All right, so we're set up, we're ready to go on top of the table, so let's go ahead and look at how we set up the floor. All right, so here we are on the floor. We have our piece of paper down here already in, here, in this video, uh, but what I did was I did a test roll and saw where did it land on the ground and then just put this piece of paper over the top of where it landed. Just so that I know it's going to land roughly in the center of this paper. I went ahead and taped the paper down because I don't want it moving between trials. Next, I'm going to need some ways so that when the ball hits, it's going to make a mark. So I have this carbon paper. You'll notice it's different colors on this side. I want the dark side down. Now, once I collect my data, I'm also going to want to be able to measure from the edge of the table out to this point. So I'm going to need to be able to measure straight down from the edge of that table. So in order to do that, when you do that test roll to figure out where it's going to land, go ahead and note where it leaves the table as well. Because what you're going to do is you're going to take some string and this might already be done for you, this plumb bob. Uh, you're going to go ahead and tie this on quick. All right, once you have it tied on, go ahead, see where it comes off that table edge. Adjust that height ever so, so it's just barely above the ground. And take a little piece of tape and tape it on that edge. Now you're going to want to tape it on the edge here so that the ball doesn't get hit by that string as it comes off the edge. This will allow us to measure from here out to those points we're going to make. So now, all right, we're all set up and ready to go. So all we got to do is run our five trials, make our marks, and collect our data. So let's do that quick. All right, now that I have my data set, it's time to measure. So go ahead, pick up that piece of paper. I had a couple extras when I was making the video there. Um, so these are my five over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure straight out from that plumb bob to approximately the center of that data set. And what I'll do then is that'll help me kind of get a general idea of that line. And what I'll do is I'll draw a line right on there and I'll mark on my line the 40 centimeter mark and the 50 centimeter mark. And what I can do now is I can pick it up and I can actually measure to each one of those points along that distance to get those distances. There we go. So after we get these measurements, we write our times on here, we should be doing calculations from there on out.